Somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. I said, somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. And if you ain't got a neighbor, look at yourself and say, she finna bring it to fuck a night. Oh, we gonna jump right into it, because that's how we do it over here. Florence Dolores Griffith, also known as Flojo, was born on December 21st in 1959. She was born in Los Angeles, California. Flojo's mama, Florence Griffith, she was known as being a seamstress. And her father, Robert, he was known as being an electronic engineer. Flojo mama had 11 children in total. And Flojo was the seventh child born from 11 kids. Flojo's mama said, shit, shit. She said, I got all of these damn kids. She said, I got to find some type of way to entertain them. So Flojo's mama said, when Flojo and her brothers and sisters were younger, they was living in a desert at this time. She said she used to line them up and play racing games with them. Y'all know how it is. You run down there. And the first one who come back and hit my hand is the one who won. Little Flo Joe was running and coming back, tapping mama hand all the damn time winning. When Flo Joe was seven years of age, she started running at a school called 102nd Street School. And this school was in Los Angeles, California. And it was a lady by the name of Annie Hall. She asked if Flo Joe could join the Sugar Ray Robinson organization. And Flo Jo Mama said, you know, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Yes, yeah, she can join. So every weekend, Flo Jo, she would go to the track meets where she ran track. When Flo Jo was attending Jordan High School, she excelled very well. Just kept going to the top, kept going to the top. Then after high school, she went to California State University at North Ridge, North Ridge. When Flojo attended California State University at North Ridge, she was coached by a man by the name of Bob Kersey. Some of y'all may have heard of him. She was able to win the national championship her first year of college. But soon after that, Flojo had to drop out of college. She had to, you know, take care of her family. She had to help support her family. And she took a job as a bank teller. Bob Kersey, he ended up calling Flojo back on the phone. He said, guess what? I done found you some financial aid. Okay, I got you some help. In other words, I done found you some money. Okay, so you can return back to college. You can be able to help your family and you can be able to come back to school. But at this time, Bob Kersey, he was coaching at UCLA. So she ended up going to UCLA to finish her education. Flo Jo continued to run track. And then she eventually graduated from UCLA with a bachelor's degree in psychology. In the 1980s, Flo Jo became very popular. When you used to think of the, the greatest track stars of that time in the 80s, one of the first people that came to mind was Flo Jo. <laughs> Flo Jo said, shit, shit, if I'm going to be running, you know, this sweet ass on these fuckers' is racetrack, y'all better believe I'm going to look damn good doing it. When we saw Flo Jo at the world championships, she was running track in her hooded body suits. Y'all seen them hooded bodysuits with the one leg out. Y'all seen that? And one thing Flo jo was also famous for is her four inches and six inches nails. Y'all remember her nails? The motherfuckers was long as hell. Flo Jo's nails was so long, her fucking nails made it to the finish line before she did. I won, bitches. I won. 
I loved her nails. I loved them. The other girls who was running track was like, shit, bitcha, let me get mine's done too. Float your head out, them bitches, with their claws out. Catch it? Everybody start getting their nails done and shit real long after that. It was a man by the name of Al Joyner. Al Joyner is known as being a track and field coach, an Olympic gold medalist in the triple jump. When Al Joyner saw Flo Jo shaking her ass running on that racing track, he said, damn, damn, I got to have that sexy beast. I got to have it. He loved it so much, he put a motherfucker ring on it. Al Joyner and Flojo got married on October 10th in 1987. And then they welcome a baby girl into the world by the name of Mary Ruth, who was born in 1990. Y'all ready to go deeper down this rabbit hole tonight? I said, are you ready to go deeper down the rabbit hole tonight? Well, come on and let's do it. Y'all remember in the year 1988, and they was reporting this story all over the news. They was reporting this story all over the news. Y'all remember this? The news reported that Flojo was taking steroids to improve her running skills. Them powder face fucker said, this little pony is running like a fucker bull. It's time to bust it on out. So they gave Flojo a drug test. Y'all remember that? They gave her a drug test. And she passed every last one of them drug tests with flying colors. Before I say this, I want to make something very clear. I will never take nothing away from Flojo. She was a talented, skilled, hard-working athlete. I want y'all to know this right here. Not everybody that you see that's successful had to make a blood sacrifice. I'm not saying that. So I don't want y'all to think that every, everybody that y'all see successful, they had to make a blood sacrifice. That's not true. The madam is not saying that. But it's also a lot of people who did make a sacrifice to become successful. It's a balance to that shit. Catch it? The athlete Flojo, she did not have to make a blood sacrifice. She did not. Flojo was just a fucking amazing. She was amazing. But sometimes when someone can see that you're good at something, they try to make you even better. They try to make you even greater. Even if that means that you got to do something that's going to help them out and hurt you in the long run. Somebody say, what you mean, so, so, madam? Somebody say, what you mean? Well, I told y'all before, she had a coach. She had a coach by the name of Bob Kersey. And when she married Al Joyner, he became her coach. And don't get it twisted. Both of them got her hooked on these steroids, y'all. Bob Kersey introduced them to her. He introduced the steroids to her. And Flojo's husband, Al Joyner, he kept her hooked on these fucking steroids. The reason why the news told us that she passed the steroid test was because they, they were setting something up in the background. They were setting something up in the background. Put it together. They knew that she was going to be blood sacrificed through taking the fucking steroids. After Flojo passed away, her family got together to charge a lawsuit on these doctors. The family said, why didn't the doctors let us know you know, why didn't they detect that Flojo had a brain abnormality two years before she died? Two years before she died. They said, why didn't they tell us that? Why didn't they tell her that? Why? Because the doctors knew that in the third year, Flojo was going to be blood sacrificed. I said, the doctors knew that in the third year, that Flojo would be blood sacrificed. That's why they didn't say anything. Catch it on fleek and put it together. Well, come on and let's take it home the fucking night. I said, I'm about to take it home. Stay with me. Y'all know how we do it over here. Murder by numbers. Look at this. 
Flojo died on September 21st in 1998. Let's add those numbers up. I'm going to go deeper. Just follow me. 9 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8 equal what? 39. 3 plus 9 equal what? That's right, 12. 1 plus 2 equal what? That's right, 3. Flo Joe died at age 38. 3 times 8 equals what? 24. 2 plus 4 equal what? 6. Put it together. The 3 6 murder by numbers. The proof is always in a fucker pudding. Flo Joe was sacrificed for Bob Kersey and her husband, Al Joyner. And some other people benefited off this sacrifice as well. It was a man. I'm going to give y'all some homework to fuck a night. You know how I do it. Give you a little piece and let y'all figure out the rest. It was a man by the name of Darrell Robinson. Go research Darrell Robinson. When he busted this steroid shitter out on their asses. When he busted this steroid shit out on their asses. His career was over. They ended his career and they blackballed his ass. When you get time, look at that story, Darrell Robinson's story. The rabbit hole go deeper. They was taking these motherfuckers out through steroids. Oh, it's all right. Go ahead and take it. It's going to make your performance better. Knowing goddamn well, years later, they was going to end up dying from heart failure that they created and put on their asses. Whew! And don't get it twisted, because it's going on with the athletes today. But y'all tell me, was Flojo a blood sacrifice, or did it just happen? And she will be back. <laughs>